some, uh, some additional uh, mathematical machinery for random processes. Uh, the first thing we need, I, I think I showed you this last time, but let me remind you. Uh, so let's remind ourselves what the autocorrelation is. Rx of T1 and T2 is the expected value of the random process x at time T1 times the random process x at time T2. We talked a bit about wide sense stationary processes. The property there is that you can express out a correlation just in terms of the difference between T2 and T1, because for any pair T2 and T1 of the same difference, it's equal to the same thing. So we said Rx of tau, we use tau to express that difference, is equal to the expected value of x of t, x of t plus tau, or a t. If we let, so here's a property we talked about last time, if we let the mean zero, then Rx of zero is equal to the expected value of, okay, substituting zero in for tau, it's the expected value of xt, xt, which is the expected value of xt squared, and because the mean is zero, this is actually equal to the variance of the random process. there is um, something you can do with the autocorrelation is you can take its Fourier transform. If it's wide sense stationary. So if you run a process is wide sense stationary, then the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation. This only works if it's white sense stationary, because if it's not white sense stationary, then the autocorrelation is a function of two variables rather than just one. So you can't really take the one-dimensional Fourier transform the same way. Fourier transform of the autocorrelation, we give that the symbol S X omega, and this is called the power spectral density. The power spectral density has lots of nice properties, uh, most of which we don't need, but basically if you take a look at a power spectral density, what it is is it gives you uh, sort of uh, where, the, where the random process is located, the frequency, where most of it in the frequency. <coughs> Power spectral density has a couple of nice properties that we will need. One is this. If, um, okay, remember I said variance of x of t, for a zero mean random process x of t, variance of x of t is equal to rx of zero, but I can also express it in terms of the power spectral density. Okay, first off, I'll just do an aside here. Um, Sx of j omega, the Fourier transform of rx of tau, which is the integral from tau equals minus infinity to infinity, Rx of tau, e to the minus j omega tau, d tau, that's just the definition of Fourier transform. So therefore, Rx of tau is the inverse Fourier transform of Sx. And here, because uh, 
we're doing it in terms of omega. It's 1 over 2 pi integral omega equals minus infinity to infinity sx of j omega e to the plus j omega tau e omega. Generally, um, I'm not going to expect you to calculate Fourier transforms. Um, but there are a few that you should know and remember from um, signals and systems, and as we come across them, I'll point them out. Okay, but um, variance of x of t is equal to that. What happens if we substitute 0 in for tau right here? Tau is here. What's e to the j omega 0? It's equal to 1. So what is that? That's 1 over 2 pi times the integral over the power spectrum. That's it. Something else. Um, if we apply a random process to a linear filter, so if we apply uh, the random process x of k, excuse me, I should be using k here for a, a discrete time processes. Apply x of k to, actually this, this even works for continuous time processes, so let's say that. If we apply x of t to a uh, linear filter with transfer function, this is a, a frequency domain transfer function h of j omega. And let's call the result. So we take x of t, apply it to this filter, and out the other side, let's say, let's call that w. Um, if we do that, get W of T, then the power spectral density of W, for one thing, uh, W of T, you can show that this is wide sense stationary if X of T is. Uh, we won't show that, but it's not too hard to show. And it's also not too hard to show that the power spectral density of W. Okay, for one thing, what happens to, if I just take, if X of T is just a function, and I apply it to a filter, then what happens to the frequency domain? Basically, I take Fourier transform of X, multiply by the Fourier transform of H, and then I get the Fourier transform of W. So here's something similar happens, but because we're in the power domain, everything is squared. So SW, that x s x j omega times the magnitude of h j omega squared. So these are the two properties that we're going to need when we talk about uh, detection in noise. They're not too hard. Uh, this one, the proof is obvious. It's just written right here. This one, the proof isn't too hard. Uh, and you can uh, you can write that down yourself. If you Why do we use power spectral density? Sometimes problems are easier to solve in the Fourier domain as opposed to the time domain. Uh, so sometimes, I mean, this seems straightforward, but sometimes it's actually easier to calculate this rather than that. Okay, so let's talk about noise. <coughs> 